Professor Eisenman. It was authored by Michael Bajent and Richard Lee. The whole book is uh, primarily based on the research of Professor Eisenman. There is a chapter in this book titled Paul, Roman Agent or Informer. And so the last uh, thing I want to do with Paul, Professor Eisenman, is simply look for a moment at motive. And uh, I know you really, really get into this in your book, uh, The Dead Sea Scrolls and the, the First Christians. I would commend this to the viewers. But let's touch on it here, is if, in fact, Paul subverted this early Christian movement um, throughout the vegetarianism, changed a lot of things. Yeah, Paul um, said, uh, all things are lawful, all things are yeah. permitted me, and eat everything in the butcher shops, eat everything yeah. in the market cleans, and may, now, uh, don't raise questions now, of conscience. Now, if, if Paul indeed subverted this early Christian Ebionite movement of Jesus and James, the question is, why was it simply, you know, his own philosophy he wanted to boldly assert and it happened to be different? Or did he, in fact, like this book asserts, have some sort of ties with the, the elite of, of, of Rome? Do you think he was some sort of species of Roman agent? Well, that's the way they put ideas that they basically ripped off of an article we have in this book called which was written, which was delivered to the Society of Biblical Literature in uh, 1984, called Paul as Her Herodian. Paul as Herodian. You might show that there. Which the Bajan and Lee had available to them, which, which had not previously been printed. So my view of Paul is laid out in that book, and they picked it up in their Dead Sea Scrolls deception and used their own language. I do believe that Paul had a Roman citizenship. I think I'm the first one that showed uh, that he probably had relations to the Herodian family because in Romans, in chapter uh, uh, 16, if your audience uh, looks at that chapter, he sends greeting to his kinsman, Herodian, H-E-R-O-D-I-O-N. He says, my relative. And Herodian in Greek is the littlest Herod, the smallest or the youngest Herod. In other words, Paul has a kinsman no called the littlest Herod. I already suspected he was a Herodian long before one of my students actually pointed that out to me. It wasn't my idea, a student of mine in the class pointed that out to me. But yes, there is, uh, how did he get his, his, his Roman citizenship? That was not an easy thing to come by. He's on, in the, even in the book of Acts, extremely uh, uh, easy relations with uh, Herodian kings, Agrippa, uh, Ber Bernice, his paramour, his sister. They were considered to be in an incestuous relationship. They appear in Acts 26 uh, and 27. Uh, Felix, the most brutal governor in uh, Palestine after Pontius Pilate. Josephus says Felix crucified so many uh, people, there wasn't enough room uh, for the crucifixions nor enough wood for the crosses. Uh, uh, Felix's paramour, Drusilla, the brother, uh, the sister of Agrippa I, all this we cover in, in the book. So Paul's on easy terms, even in acts with these people. He has an entree into the highest circles. In the letter to the Philippians, Paul sends greetings to the household of Nero. He sends Epaphroditus. We cover Epaphroditus in this book, who is Josephus' publisher, who was Nero's secretary for, for Greek letters. He sends greetings to people in the household of Nero. So he's got very high relations. I don't know. If he went to Rome and was supposed to have been executed and wasn't, there's only one way that he could have survived such a trip if in some sense he went into service of some kind. The Bajan and Lee people speak of that as being an agent or a double agent or an informer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think in some way Paul was deeply compromised with the Roman authority. And uh, just briefly... Um, Which is Roman citizenship would imply. Can you imagine yeah. Jesus when he's arrested, pulling out his Roman passport and saying, do you arrest Roman citizens? It, j just briefly, um, am I correct um, from my reading of the Clementine manuscript that we've been discussing that there seems to be a description of Paul attempting to kill James, the brother of Jesus? Oh, absolutely. That's true, too. Yes. We forgot that, didn't we? In the early career of Paul, when he is, the Acts admits that he's an enemy of the early church, Paul even admits in, in, in Galatians that he persecuted the church unto death. 
Uh, I show in my book that there's very uh, strange things going around on in the execution of John the Baptist. Uh, but also in the pseudo-Clementines, the recognitions picture Paul as leading an actual physical assault on James and throwing him down the um, steps. The reason we didn't cover it here was because even the pseudo-Clementines admit that that didn't cause James' death, but the detail is very, very precise. James broke one or both of his legs because when later James sends Peter off on his first missionary journey, all this would strike your audience as bizarre because I've never heard any of it. It's all in the pseudo-Clementine literature that comes from the second and third century, almost as old as our book of Acts is supposed to be. When James sends Peter off on his first missionary journey, Peter says he's still limping on one foot from the fall he took after Paul attacked him in the temple. Yeah. That's incredible detail, and that's down in Jericho, where our Dead Sea Scrolls were more or less found. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of material pointing to an actual physical assault by Paul on James in the early career, and there is other material pointing to the fact that Paul had a hand, early church admits this, in the death of early Christians. I would go so far as to say that it may have been John the Baptist as well, because I'll tell you why the John the Baptist thing is... is are very strange. Paul in Acts is always anxious to cover up all of this material. Do you know the episode I'm talking about, a famous episode when Paul is let down the wall of Damascus in a basket? Acts says, and Acts is always secondary to Paul's own first person testimony. Your audience should bear that in, in mind. When there's a conflict between Acts and Paul's own testimony, which there often is, it's Paul that is, uh, it's Paul's own testimony that should be preferred. Uh, Acts says, Paul was escaping down the walls of Damascus to escape from the Jews who wanted to kill him. But Paul in 2 Corinthians says, I escaped down the walls of Damascus in a basket to escape from the representatives of King Aretas. King Aretas was an Arab king in Transjordan. And King Aretas' people were taking vengeance for the death of John the Baptist. So if Paul was an Herodian involved with people like the people who killed John the Baptist, it would make sense that Paul was escaping from the representatives of King Aretas. Acts changes that into anti-Semitism, which is my problem with Acts. It is always moving over into the area of anti-Semitism, and if one wants to know why we have so much anti-Semitism in the, in the Western world, a good place to begin to look for it is in the book of Acts. So the movement you represent actually does a healing process on this because you remove all of this, what I would consider material unworthy of Christianity, from the table. And you go over to a much more gentle, soft, docile, honest brand of Christian love and charity. Dr. Eisenman, I want to thank you uh, for being with us tonight. I want to again 